All right, guys, we are in the beautiful state of Utah. We're right now we're in Salt Lake City, and today we are taking the Land Rover Discovery, the full-size one. All right, so we got all this luggage here. We gotta get it all in here. We just put the first seat down. Oops, sorry about the finger there. So here we go. So that I wore, you have that little bit of space. Let's pull the tether, and voila. All right, well, we got the second seats down, so we're gonna do two in here. And I tell you what, it's pretty spacious already. I, I like the size of this. We will get this in with no problem and still have plenty of room to spare. All right, let's load up and get out of here. about doing a review on a Discovery Rover is I'm doing it in Utah and these views are just incredible. I mean, they're just, I've never seen anything like this before. Guys, Utah is a beautiful state. I, I don't know if everyone knows that or not, but incredible. I gotta tell you, my first impression of this Discovery Land Rover here is not favorable. It's very wobbly and it's noisy. I'd expect a lot more knowing that Land Rover, Range Rover, all in the same book here um, is supposed to be on the luxury end. Um, but we'll see how it goes. That's just the first impression. It does have a lot of cool little things that I'm playing with though. So it could be my drive might be a little shaky because I'm playing with all the little toys or it's just really that shaky. We'll see. Let's take a look at this. Right off the bat, it has a sleek design. I think they really nailed that design. But I'll tell you what, if you have OCD, one of the things that are gonna drive you crazy is this offset license plate on the back. I don't know what you were thinking, but either way, still sleek, still looks good. Let's take a look at the sides. The lines are great, plenty of room. This here is a five door. You have the two here and you got the rear hatch, which is good. There's also three seats in this. So you got your two front, then your middle, and then your back two. We'll take a look at those in a second. This here is 2018, as I said. Comes with 345 horse from a supercharged motor that is made from Jaguar. That's where Land Rover and Jaguar got together and they got the motor from Jaguar. So the motor's pretty solid, pretty dependable. It does zero to 60 and seven seconds, well actually 6.9, but it has pretty decent pickup for the size of the vehicle. Okay, so here's the Land Rover key and has the nice fifth door option here where it pops the back. So let's take a look at that. Pretty sweet. What I like about this is it's got plenty of room for luggage. As you see, we're leaving this on here. There's two big uh, suitcases and then two medium suitcases. The cool thing about this that I like is this back flip up piece right here. It's like an extra little piece so stuff doesn't come flying out from there, which is pretty neat. And everything's automatic. You have the push button right up here that shuts it back right now as you see we have the third row seating down for this uh, luggage so let's close this up for now nice and smooth that lifts back up closes nice solid but there's three rows the back is already down this one goes down also which is pretty neat you have a little knob right here on your headrest push that down that drops it, then you go ahead, hit this handle here, pushes it forward, boom. So now you do the same thing with the next two. You have extra room in there, which is pretty good. So it's very, very roomy, it comes with leather, 
Can't complain about that, that's nice. Has a great speaker system in it. As you can see, there's speakers throughout. Okay, so let's take a look at the front seat. Front seat, as you see, these are 10-way adjustable. So you have power seats that are 10-way. And you have that on the passenger side, which is pretty cool. You got plenty of room here. Things I don't like is, see what I have your placement of your, that's, not, that's to open your windows. I feel it should be down here where the locks are. So it's kind of confusing. I mean, that's correct. So you can change your mirrors. But here, no, I don't get that. Either way though, they're up here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the inside from the front. Okay, another one of the cool features that this does have is the moonroof. You have front and you have back. And so it has the power slider. So what happens is you get plenty of room when you open it or plenty of uh, view in sight. So that's the front side open. Then you can do the same to the back. Boom, so basically your whole roof minus your front little bar right here has a moon roof so you can see outside and the passengers are able to adjust it right there if they want to shut it there's the buttons right there for them inside looking at the storage here you have a couple cup holders here on both sides of our legs we have them excuse a little bit of a mess you know we've been in this for two weeks but either way you got a little cubby here another cubby here for some change or something you can open up the center console where you have a tray for whatever you need handy license and registration close it up and you can open it up and deep and as you see I got plenty of stuff stored in there also you have your 12 volt charger right there you have a micro sim card reader plus two USB ports for charging you also have another one right there so if you need to add more it has plenty of charging features so you can do this we also have a glove compartment here which holds plenty of stuff and then we have a cool little thing here you push this button that opens this part down here and that's where you put your Land Rover what is that user manual along with maybe I don't know maybe you want your registration there or some other papers don't have much room besides that but either way you can always take that out put it in the house and then you have that room right there for storage also now I want to show you one feature that I just don't get see these wipers I can't figure it out for the life of me while this vehicle is in park they go on when I put it into drive and actually start to take off from it they'll go back down I can't figure that out for the life of me but it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen I can't understand why they did this so if anybody has an idea out there go ahead comment below let me know what purpose does this serve Coming back outside, I want to show you guys one other thing that I think is uh, noteworthy. One of the cool features on this isn't, you know, it's not in the inside, but it's on the outside. Discovery went ahead and made a wiper, well not wiper, but a sprayer for their camera. As you see, this is the camera right here, and that's the sprayer for it. Because as you see, we're in Utah, and there's been a lot of snow, and I've already washed this thing twice, and as you see, it picks up so much, and this back gets so dirty from just a blowback, this is a cool thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate that right now and go ahead and take a look at this. Look at that, isn't that neat? That's something I've never seen before. I really like that, cool. Very good idea, guys. Okay, so the one thing I need to mention in this vehicle is it has an MSRP of between 52 and $58,000. Now. For this, in my opinion, it's a lot. And the reasons why are a couple that I've already talked about that I didn't really like. They're just kind of silly. But this right here is one of the main things that, I, I mean, I can't get over how absurd this system is. This infotainment system is not only basic, but it's very limited. Like, this doesn't even have heated seats. I've gone in there to try and find these several times. I've watched other videos from you guys out there, and I'm gonna tell you, they're not in here. I've gone into the settings a 100 times trying to figure out where they are, and no matter what, you can't get back to them. This is not the easiest infotainment uh, system I've ever seen. This one's actually very, very hard. Um, let's go back into home. 
if I hit the navigation, it comes up nice. It gives me where I'm at and gives me my fuel stations and stuff. That's pretty cool. Um, but again, this isn't easy to put in. I've tried to put in different um, uh, places to go to, my destinations, and, and believe it or not, if you hit where you want, it doesn't go to it. So again, you have to be an expert at that. I really slammed this because no heated or no air conditioned seats, no heated steering wheel. And again, I'm in Utah right now, so it is uh, 34 degrees as we speak, and it's been down a lot lower. They would be nice little uh, features to have. You know, the buttons are pretty, don't get me wrong, those are nice. There's a couple basics that are right into you that are easy to get to, but the rest of it, not an easy system. Um, I have no idea why you've uh, done that. Come over to the steering wheel. I like what they did over here. They grouped everything on, so you have your, you know, your mode for your stereo, your speaking and your calling ability, so you can just hit your button and then call whoever you need to call on your phone um, once you connect it. And then your cruise is on here, which is nice and simple. You have paddle shift. Okay, so this does have the sport mode, so you can just go ahead and go right into sport mode, and only then you can use your paddle shifters. As you see right here, command shift it, select it. So right to two, three, and this is an eight speed transmission that it comes with, which is very good. So, you know, with a 345 horsepower motor, you have the ability to go into sport and you have paddle shifters. That still makes it a little bit of fun. I love the styling of it. Again, we do not like this infotainment system. One of the things you can control on the infotainment center is your four wheel drive. Now this is all wheel drive, so it's on all the time. This again took me a long time to figure out and I don't have it all, but you can play with this, your off-road information. If you hit that, nothing, here you go. This will tell you how your shocks are, are, are lined up and, and what's locked and what's not locked. I don't know how to get out of, you know, to unlock it or keep it locked if it, if it does have that because it doesn't tell you. Um, you have to play with so many different things to kind of figure it out. And these are like all dead keys over here. When you touch them, it, this is a touch tone, but it's dead. So let's hit this. Comfort program selected. Provides balance, driving experience, optimized for off-road, on-road driving. Okay? So let's bring you down here. There's a little button down here. And right here, this changes. Well, you push the selector down and it pops up. So now you can change everything here. So you see grass gravel and then a low traction comes on so ask me if I want to launch that then I can change it again to this so this is for mud and ruts change it again that's a sand program that comes up there and then this one's a rock crawl so it gives you all these little cool features this is where the discovery really I guess you're gonna pay for is this four wheel drive system. It's really second to none. They do a really good job with that. The rest of the stuff, they need tons and tons of work on. Okay, let's, uh, enough about this and let's go take this for a ride and see how it goes. Yeah, right here. Let's get this back on the auto. So my lights come on automatically. And I can tell you right off the bat, as I hit these little bit of bumps, this is not a smooth ride in vehicle whatsoever. There's nothing smooth about it. I, I know it's made for off-road, but for everyday driving on the street, which most people have, they're not off-roading every day, this is rough. You feel every single bump. And at 50 something thousand dollars, I don't feel you should feel these bumps. It should be off and there should be a way to adjust that on or off. Um, like maybe a comfort mode or an off or four wheel drive mode instead of that right there as you can hear it. The other thing that I find with this vehicle is it's noisy. Price point, this shouldn't be as noisy. You hear everything outside. You hear all the ruts, you hear all the bumps, you can hear it all. All right, so I'm at a light, let's take off. Again, even though this is a zero to 60 and 6.9 it has pretty good takeoff for this vehicle i don't mind that at all the 345 horsepower motor really does what it needs to do again this is a 
utility vehicle, so it does its job. You're gonna haul groceries most of the time with this car. Okay. One of the other things that we've noticed over driving this for a couple weeks is, on these roads here, your steering is is relatively you know solid. It doesn't it doesn't weave and doesn't go all over. Um, but when you get into higher speeds, when you're into like the 70 range, like the speed limit on the highway, this vehicle is hard to control. It, you touch it too much and you're in the next lane. It kind of feels like it's more top heavy. So you're kind of like going up and down and you know swaying all over. So you got that un, uh, that unstabling uh, feeling, I guess, for lack of better words. It's not good. That I don't like at all. I think they could have done another, uh, again, a better job at price point on this vehicle that should be addressed. That's gonna wrap up today's review on the 2018 Discovery. Um, if you liked it, give us a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. Also, check out the beautiful state of Utah if you get the chance. In this video, I posted some nice uh, little uh, clips of the mountains here and stuff like this. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I try to make it, you know, part of Utah along with this review. And I hope it's something you guys really like. Um, this was an incredible trip for our EMC. And uh, guys, again, I appreciate everyone watching, everyone subscribing. You guys have been great about that. Go ahead and check us out on Instagram. Our Instagram is still small. We're trying to build that up. And that is at Exotic Muscle Cars 2019. Go ahead and give us a like there.